mate, Clint Anderson here from Down Under Horsemanship. Well, Titan and I are back to film another episode in our performance horse series. Uh, we've got tremendous response from it so far, and I really appreciate you guys watching and, and t sending us your comments and emails of how much it's helped you. So we're gonna keep, keep doing it and continue with it. So today is January 22nd, okay, um, 2016. I've got the gloves and the jacket on because it's pretty cold here in Stimville, Texas. And um, uh, we're gonna continue on where, where we kind of left off last time, okay? Titan has had exactly six months and 22 days of training. So he's been ridden on average five, sometimes six days a week for the last six months and, and to the 22nd of January, okay? Um, the name of the game is Foundation. That's everything at this point with this particular horse. Um, he has caught up to all of my other fertility prospects. Uh, you know, I think this year I have seven, oh no, six uh, random fertility prospects that all just turned three. And he's actually caught up to all of them and he's ahead of most of them. But even though he's ahead of most of them and he's caught up, uh, I still treat him like he's a two-year-old because he's technically had six months less riding than all of my other fertility horses. So the name of the game is not to um, push him, it's to develop him. You know, one of the last things that my mentor, Ian Francis, said to me when he got on the plane to go back to uh, Australia when I had him over to the ranch rally last year, you know, Ian Francis won the National Reign of Fertility five times, he won the National Cutting Fertility twice in Australia, he's won every performance Western event in Australia at least two or three times. And um, he spent some time with me and Titan and uh, helped me with the horse and watched me ride him and I discussed things. And, and just before he got on the plane, he turned around and looked at me and he said, Clinton, he said, said, take your time with that horse. And I said, what do you mean? He said, take your time, because he said, that's a great horse. And he said, great horses, truly great horses, don't come along very often. You might, you might wait another five to 10 years before you get another one like him again. And he said, in my career, I've probably had five horses like that in, in 35 years. And he said, when you find them, you take good care of them, you treat them good, you develop them, and you don't, you don't let their talent exceed them, meaning that even though he feels good, even though he's caught up to the other horses, don't take advantage of that. Keep building his foundation. So, and that's what I'm gonna do. So, you know, uh, this year, if he's ready, I'll show him in the fraturities this year. If he's not ready, I'm not gonna show him. It's just that simple. He's got, I want him to have a, a extremely long, prosperous career, and we're not gonna have that happen unless we take good care of him physically and mentally and keep building his confidence. So let me kind of show you what, where we are with the next kind of um, step in his, uh, his training. So again, I kind of set this up that when I get on him, I, uh, I kind of just try to show you what I would do if the camera wasn't there. We don't really script a hell of a lot. Really, I don't script anything with that film. We just kind of turn the camera on and I just tell you what I'm thinking and doing and we kind of go from that. Um, but uh, just getting on him here, again, I'm still working on this foundation, still flexing him, making sure he's nice and light here, okay? I'm still riding him in a snap a bit. I'll probably do, keep him in a snap a bit for another uh, month maybe and then I'll put him into a little shank snaffle. It's a snaffle mouthpiece, but it's got a little shank on it with a little chain underneath because it's starting to get him ready to be ridden one-handed, okay? <clears throat> you'll notice kind of overall, you, some things you'll notice different from this filming from the last one. You know, we're filming him on average about every, every 60 to 90 days, depending on my travel schedule. Um, before I forget, you'll notice that we keep his tail up, okay? All of my uh, show horses, once they turn three onwards, we keep their tail up in a sock like this and we, we let it down every week, we wash it, we condition it, uh, we take good care of it, and then we put it back up in a sock again. And that's how you get those show horses to have such great tails on them. We take care of their manes. Uh, we don't really wrap their manes that much. Most horses, some we do, but not, not most of them. So that's why his tail's up in a sock here. And we'll actually show you, there's a, there's a technique that we use to put a horse's tail up. There's lots of ways of putting a horse's tail up, okay? There's like a hundred of them. Over the years, I've experimented with every way that you can protect a horse's tail in the world. The way that we do it now, and I've changed to this in the last probably four or five years, absolutely makes the tail grow. It just gets full and it gets thick and it just makes it grow. And so we'll actually show you, my ranch manager, Katie Kelch, she'll actually show you how we do this. Uh, and if you want to take care of your horse's tail, it's just like human hair. You've got to kind of babysit it, take care of it, look after it, okay? So we'll show you that later.
after I do my flexing, I'm gonna walk him around and just bend him around my inside leg, okay? So in my mind, Titan, you know, is on month seven of his two-year-old year, okay? Even though he's technically three now, uh, and he's pretty much, he has, you know, he's really caught up to all of them, and he's past 90% of them, but I still treat him like he's a two-year-old. The reason I think like that is because it'll make me, one of the hardest things that I have to control on me is not taking advantage of him, meaning this. He feels so good to ride, and he feels so talented, I wanna do more with him. Like it's that urge, it feels good. You wanna, you wanna see, you know, kinda like you wanna let, the, you wanna let the, the, the muscle car out of the garage and go see what it can do. So I have to mentally kinda make myself back off a little bit, keep building his confidence, etc. okay? So every day I'll come on, I'll use that inside spur. He feels a little heavy just there, so I roll that spur in his belly just then. I want him to bend him around that inside leg. Suppling is everything to me. A horse that's soft and supple has a much better chance of being a great performance horse. But horses that are stiff and heavy, it limits their ability. See, here's how it goes. The more naturally talented a horse is, like I mean pure talent, um, the less soft and supple they have to be and they can still look pretty cool. So a great talented horse, they can be a little on the stiff and unbroke side and still look pretty fancy. But if you get that talented horse soft and supple and get, get control of those five body parts and you get him broke from the tip of his nose to his tail real soft, man, that, that talent goes to another level. But when you've got a horse that's not very talented and doesn't have a lot of natural ability, suppleness is what keeps him looking good uh, and soft and broke. But you get a, a horse with no talent and he's not broke, well now he's just now he's just terrible. He's just nothing at all there, okay? So talent, you can cheat with getting your horse soft and supple, the more talented they are. That doesn't mean I think you should, it just means I think that every horse needs to get broke and soft and supple. Okay? So I'm gonna jog him around a little bit now. You know, when I get on the warm-up, the first 10 minutes of warm-up is is big. Getting the horse soft and supple, flexing him, moving his five body parts. It's not about just getting out there and loping circles and start stopping them and spinning them. It's about warming their body up, but not just their body, but you're warming up their brain. You're getting them to, to reinforce, move off my leg, move off my hands, get soft to me, etc. So first 10 minutes of just nice, easy warm up is a big part of, of how I train a performance horse. It doesn't matter how much training the horse has had. The first 10 minutes is warm up time, preparation time. Um, you know, it's kind of like going to the gym and the first few minutes you just stretch before you go, it doesn't matter how advanced a bodybuilder you are or, or, or person in the fitness, the first 10 minutes is about stretching, warming up and mentally getting in the game. I do the same thing with my horses so that I cut back on injuries and I, and I, I don't just jump stop but cult, start the cult into heavy training, we, we, we progress into it. When I pick up, I'm softening his chin and I turn him loose. I do a lot of that, picking him up here at the jog, turning him loose. And I want him to hold that shape when I jog him around. See, I'm, I'm, I, over the course of my training with him, you'll notice I keep pitching those reins back to him. My goal is to get him to stay in frame, bridled up and soft. So people ask, you know, how do I get this horse, how do you get your horse to bridle up and be soft and a loose rein? You pick them up, you soften their body, you collect them, you turn them loose. When they get out of frame, you pick them up, soften them, and then you turn them loose. And, and it takes, you know, it takes 18 months of, of just keep bridling a horse up, collecting them, turning them loose, till they hold that, that shape and that collection by themselves. Not every horse is always gonna do it, but that's what kind of we're aiming for, okay? I'll pick him up now, kind of bend him over this way. Some people call it reverse arc. Change my shape. And I, I love riding with these, these loop reins. These, I just call them little performance horse reins there. It's a thinner rope than the regular McCarty reins that I, I use in the method. And they got these little tiny little slobber straps so they don't flop around in the horse's face. When you start getting to this level of performance, too much movement of the reins is kind of distracting for the horse. So I'll pick him up, squeeze him up into his face, then turn him loose. So every day, the first 10 minutes, is just, a, is just suppling those five body parts, making sure that I can move them, hinge them anywhere I want. And I don't always try to, I, I, I try to warm up every day differently. So some days I'll do this, what I'm doing here, going from one reverse arc to another, okay? And so every time I film, I'll try to show you just a little bit different warm up procedure, okay? There we go. 
Sometimes I'll spend the first 10 minutes just backing them up. I think a lot of people underestimate how, how much a backup will improve a horse's overall brokenness. I tell people all the time, the backup is the foundation of a sliding stop. If your horse can back up really well and soft with cadence, you've got a much better chance of getting a good sliding stop. But if the horse backs up with stiffness and heaviness and he won't move his feet, unless that horse is naturally a big stopper, and I've seen some horses out there that could absolutely gallop down the arena and drag their ass across the ground and stop, but could barely back up at all. They were so sorry broke. That's, I've seen it happen, so it's not like it can't. But those horses are pretty rare. They just have so much natural talent, they do it anyway, okay? But when you get a horse with natural talent and a great backup, now you put it together, you got a great stop. Well, mate, thanks for watching our Titan series. Remember to check out the next episode coming soon.